Segunjalo Investments is one of the leading black-owned uh, investment vehicles in the country. What are your views on issues like BE quotas that exist so many years after liberation and the whole notion of indigenous capital? Thanks a lot. Thank you for having me. Um, look, uh, South Africa is obviously um, rebuilding, you know, as we're only a democracy for the last 15, 15 years now. And I think from an indigenous point of view, you know, we pride ourselves in being a, uh, a preeminent black empowered company. And I think, you know, there is still a role to play for, for BE. And as you know, most of the, of the sectors in the, in the South African market hasn't transformed fully yet. And I think there's opportunity to, to, to grow there. We also believe that over the last 15 years, and especially within our group, we have built quite a bit of leaders that can go forward you know, within, within the South African economy and the African economy to grow various business, either with ourselves or I mean, you know, within the environment. Sekunjalo has obviously, since its listing 12 years ago, has grown significantly. And we do see that South Africans can grow businesses. And secondly, we are taking the platform up now to the next level where we want to grow within Africa by creating f uh, further jobs in the various sectors, as we have, I mean, in the fishing area, in our IT businesses and our strategic investments within multinational parties. I mean, those who are very critical of things like economic empowerment in the South African context say that what we need is local entrepreneurship. We need the rise of local capital, not piggybacking off any legislation. What are some of the difficulties you've experienced that you could uh, refer to? Look, some of, the difficult, some of the difficulties that were experienced, I think, historically is that the leadership qualities of various uh, um, companies, multinationals, black empowerment, all of them, they weren't training and transforming uh, junior and middle managers into senior executives. I think we pride ourselves in having done that over the last while, and we believe that that's a sustainable model for South Africa and Africa. And I think if more people invest in, in, it, in the people like we have, um, from a leadership point of view, I think that is quite key. And we do, we, we do pride ourselves in it, and we have leadership uh, 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 programs within our organization, besides from all levels, uh, um, from all levels within the organization and our structures to grow entrepreneurs in South Africa. And I think for them to think differently, our whole model has changed. The people, you know, we believe that by thinking differently, thinking out of the box, we can grow. And we right. do have the confidence to, to grow within South Africa and Africa. I think that's quite key. I mean, you refer to the fact that you listed uh, over 12 years ago in 1999. You've also used other avenues such as private equity. And the reason I'm raising this is, you know, just getting a sense of the profitability of local entities, because that's what people are arguing, is we need to create companies that can match uh, multinationals using FDI. We need that level of local investment, which have been profitable for you. Look, Second Jala has been listed for 12 years, but as, as you know, I mean, when we, when Second Jala listed uh, 12 years ago, there were approximately 40 black businesses on the Johannesburg Stock Exchange. It's probably whittled down to five. However, I think the five that are there are quite prominent, and I think they've sort of grown. And I think we're seeing that with foreign uh, um, um, investment coming through, we're taking advantage of that to grow within South Africa. And I think by all these companies now having grown and made their mistakes in the past, like we have, and, and most of us will admit that, and we've now we've, we've, we've grown from it and we've learned from it, and I think we're ready to grow within, within the future. And I think that's quite key and very important to know that. And foreign and FDIs come to, to the country wanting to deal with people who understand business. As you know, Sekunjalo has right. run and managed most of our business in the past, and we've learned the mistakes and we've grown our business substantially over the last while. And we've, 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 you know, we've got this, the, we've, we paid our school fees as well. And I think that's what, that is what we see in the multinationals coming to us now as a partner of choice to grow within South Africa and Africa. You've raised an interesting point when you say that initially there were about 40 black owned entities and now it's about five big conglomerates. This raises the question of longevity and sustainability. What we've tended to see in the heydays of uh, BE is uh, lots of shares being bought, lots of acquisitions, and then five, six, seven years down the line, investors wanting to cash in and move into other areas. And this is raising questions as to whether or not black companies are companies here for the long haul. Yeah, Rata, you, 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 you're quite right. Uh, now the point is that for, uh, uh, 12 years ago, there were 40 black listed uh, uh, um, companies on the JSE. And most of the models initially, I think, were based on owning equity, but without adding value, and secondly, without really having a say on the boards. 
Our model is completely different. I mean, when we take equity, we make sure it's significant equity, and we can manage and influence the board, which I think is quite key. We also pride ourselves in adding value, and I think that is where the difference is between various business models. Our business model, however, has created value in the fact that you know we sit on those boards, we add value, we, we make sure that the business grows, and because we've learned from what we've done over the past, uh, having been able to run those companies, some of our multinational partners see the value we add at the board level and strategic level and getting involved in operations if need be. And we, we're happy to roll up our sleeves as well at times to, to get it successful and, and grow. And I think that is the, the, the model that I believe is the way to go forward. And, and, and we don't sit back I and hope your investment does. And going forward, what can we expect to see from Sekunjalo? I mean, we've seen some acquisitions in uh, business outsourcing recently, your partnership with KPMG. We know that you're quite bullish about Africa, setting up offices in countries like Mauritius. Which are the interesting investment avenues in Africa? Which are the countries that are hotspots for you? From a, a corporate point of view, you know, we, still, we still see ourselves as a partner of choice for strategic investments, hence the British telecoms and the Saab uh, investment we did. However, in our operational businesses, which is the fishing business, we see significant growth in that because we've, we've, we are, we're very efficient in it. And we've, we, we catch our stocks every year, we sell our stocks every year, the demand is there. We're seeing that the South African uh, industry is probably one of the best fishing managed businesses and uh, sectors in, in the world and quotas going up instead of being reduced. Our IT business, I believe, is going to be a star performer. And in the past, we depend quite heavily on our fishing, but I think our IT has grown to an extent that it will exceed um, the, the uh, dependence on, on our fishing. And that is, I think, where, where I think where the, the, the group is going as well, yeah. 